Hi, I'm Jeff Hilton and today we're going to do a little video tutorial on how to shoot videos and more specifically on how to shoot music videos. The three things that we're going to be talking about in this video are going to be planning or what we call pre-production and then there will be the actual gathering of the shots that you need for your video and that's called the production end of it and we're going to be talking about editing and uh, the final mixing of your video or post-production. So let's get started and, and let's do a brief overview of what it's like to shoot a video. The first aspect we're going to look at is called pre-production and that's also called planning. Planning is very important in shooting any kind of video because Without a, a road map, you're not going to know where you're going to go in, uh, on your trip. So it's the same with, with doing a video. You need to know what it is you want to shoot and how you want to do it. The first thing you want to do is create a script, basically. And a script can be anything from a 10-page, uh, fully uh, blown-out script to just a single page with ideas of what you want to shoot. So what I usually do is I get a piece of paper and on one side, I put video and then the other side I put audio and then on the, on the video side of it you'll write what what you're going to be looking at what what you're going to see and on the other side you're going to have what audio or what sounds will go with that video and it's just a general planning of of how you want the video to look another thing that's very handy in, in production of a video is what's called a storyboard and that is where you take a, a large piece of uh, cardboard or a big piece of paper and you basically draw uh, what the scenes are going to look like. And it doesn't have to be fancy artwork, it can be just stick figures uh, just depicting what it is that you want to have the, the, the camera looking at. So you might have some uh, uh, representations of uh, close-ups of your actors or you might have uh, scenic uh, uh, shots to establish where you are with your with your production just a general idea and then from uh, any kind of camera moves or angles that you want to uh, make sure that are in there you, you you can illustrate those as well with arrows and movement uh, symbols another thing you would want to do is to plan your blocking or the shot plan of your video and what that entails is figuring out where your camera is going to be located for the different shots, uh, what kind of shots you want to use. Uh, do you want an establishing shot at the beginning or do you want close-up shots of your actors, uh, medium shots to show action between the characters. Uh, these kinds of things you would figure out beforehand and you would you know, draw those out and indicate what it is you want to do. The other thing that it helps you to do is to decide what kind of lighting you want to have or if there's mic placement, if you're going to be picking up audio. Uh, the other thing that it allows you to do is to figure out the actions that your actors or your talent is going to be t doing uh, during the scene. So if a couple of people are going to be interacting with each other, you want to have them enter in and into the scene and establish where they're going to stand and how the camera is going to pick them both up. So it's just general overall planning to enable you to uh, decide where, where it is your camera is going to be set up. So the next topic we're going to talk about is the actual production, the capturing of your video uh, sequences. Before we get into that, I just want to talk about the, the whole idea of um, equipment. Um, to do a good video, it's essential to have good equipment and depending on your budget, depending on uh, the availability of equipment, you might not be able to have the highest end kind of equipment to shoot with, but um, you can make do with some uh, less expensive equipment. So video equipment goes uh, the gamut from anything from your your higher-end prosumer type uh, video cameras uh, similar to the one that I'm using to shoot this video or this one here which is a, uh, a standard definition camera. Uh, another thing that is 
become very popular today for shooting videos is your digital SLRs. Now these are very, very handy for shooting video because they have very good quality, they're um, high definition. The other thing about a, a DSLR is that uh, you can interchange the lenses. So if you have different lenses for your camera, you can actually use those to get different effects in your in your video. So you might you might have a regular lens for just a general general shots. You might have a telephoto lens, which you would use for uh, getting distance shots or extreme close-ups. The other thing about the dig digital SLR is that uh, you have full fo uh, you have full uh, control over focusing and your depth of field. And we'll get into that a little bit later on. Another kind of camera which is very popular is your uh, your consumer type. Handycam. Uh, these are very popular and very inexpensive nowadays. Uh, they will record to full HD. And uh, the, the one thing about them that is not as good as, uh, say, a, a, a prosumer camera is that you don't have as, as much control over things like focus and depth of field and whatnot. A lot of people like to shoot videos with their cell phones. And even though they do do a fairly decent job of creating a good high definition uh, picture, I wouldn't recommend using a cell phone to shoot a, a professional video because they just haven't got the quality that you need. The other thing is you don't really have the kind of control that you have with a regular camera for focusing and for zooming. And, and uh, uh, one of the things about the phone is it is very difficult to mount on a tripod and get it, you know, good control of it. One type of camera which has become very popular in recent years is the little uh, action cameras like the GoPro. These are great if you're shooting video where you're, you know, um, dealing with some action. Uh, you've got somebody snowboarding or ro roller skating or something like that. You want to attach the camera onto a helmet, get a point of view shot, that kind of thing. These are very, very good and they're very good quality. Uh, and you can get different accessories for them for um, being able to see what you're shooting on your phone as a viewfinder, so uh, that's one thing you can consider as well. Now when you're capturing your footage for your video, basic camera operation is essential. You want to be able to mount your camera on a tripod and you want to be able to control things like focus, uh, your depth of field, uh, your aperture, and be able to control it so that you can create the effects that you want to have in your video. As I said, you, you want to be able to mount that camera on a tripod. Being on a tripod is, is very critical because um, one of the big things about shooting videos is you want to have the image as smooth as possible and the best way to do that is, is through the use of a tripod. Now you can shoot handheld in some cases, but I would limit that because handheld shooting is very tricky. Unless you've got some kind of image stabilization uh, software on your computer or you've got some kind of an image stabilizing rig that you can use like a, uh, like a Steadicam type of uh, arrangement, it's very difficult to get good quality images with handheld unless that's the kind of uh, creative look you want it to have. Uh, a lot of the uh, productions we see nowadays are, are very shaky and very uh, rough because that's that's the style that they want to shoot in. But uh, for the most part, I would suggest keeping things fairly straight and simple and smooth. And so in that respect, uh, a tripod is, is a very good thing to use. A couple of things to talk about when you're dealing with composition. In other words, when you're framing up your shots, uh, a very uh, common practice in photography is what they call a rule of thirds, where you take the picture that you're looking at, you divide it into three on the horizontal and three on the vertical, which would give you nine separate segments of your, your picture. And what you want to do is you want to line up your, uh, your subject on one of those lines, on the, the third lines, so that they're off to the side a little bit. And this, this actually gives a bit more interest to the viewer when they're, when they're actually viewing uh, the video. 
it's a, like I say, it's a very popular thing to have in, in just regular photography, but it's also good, a good thing to use uh, in, in shooting video. Now, because you're shooting video and you have movement, those, those rules are going to be, uh, you know, broken quite a bit because as you move around, as you change your shots, you know, things are going to go into a different position. But always try and frame up your, your subjects using the rules, uh, the rule of thirds. Another aspect of video uh, shooting that uh, not a lot of people understand is what we call the axis of action. The axis of action so it talks about how when you've got something going on in your scene, say there's two people talking, you have an axis between them. You have a line, that's an imaginary line that's drawn between them as they're talking. Basically the rule says that you should never have two cameras, one on either side of that line. Both cameras should be on the same line. And that is just so that when you're shooting the different angles of, 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 your, act, of your actors, uh, they're facing in the correct direction each time for whatever camera is on. Uh, and that is, it's less distracting to the viewer. Focus and depth of field are two very important aspects of videography. Focus is one thing that you have control over with the, the, the more professional cameras. And it allows you to control where the interest is, is pointed in your, in, your, in your scene. So for instance, if, if somebody is in the foreground speaking and you've got them in focus, the background might be out of focus and that is what, where your depth of field comes into play. Depth of field basically defines what part of the scene is going to be in focus and what part is not. With a shallower depth of field, you might have a subject in the foreground speaking, and in the background, everything is out of focus or blurry. But in, in terms of being able to manipulate that, you can do what is called a pull focus, where it, the focus goes off the person in the foreground and onto that action in the background. So it draws the viewer's attention away from the person in the foreground to that action in the background and helps to manipulate what they're seeing. One important consideration to make when you're shooting a music video is should you have your music live or should you lip sync it? One advantage to using a, a music track and lip syncing to it is that with multiple camera shots uh, you can stop and start your camera, move it around, change your, change your angles and, and get a consistency in, in, the, in the production because the music's always going to remain the same. And this will also become an advantage when you're editing your music at the end because you'll be able to lay down your, your song or your audio track and then edit your video to that track, uh, synchronizing the, the lips uh, of, the, of the performance to the, to the actual music. Now one of the things about shooting a video is that you have so many things that you can use for creative control. And again, this goes back to your planning. Do you want to have special lighting that creates a certain mood? Do you want to have camera angles that are a little bit unusual to create uh, a dynamic effect? Do you want to have a fairly dark scene with just one light coming from the side to create a, a, a mood uh, that's pertain, you know, uh, consistent with whatever it is that the song is about? Uh, so these are the kinds of things that you would, you would consider when you're planning your shoot. So what you will end up uh, with when you're shooting is the ability to create different moods, different effects using lighting, using your camera angles, using your focus and your depth of field, using zooms, using movement, and uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit more creative control over how your video is. It is a good thing to have all that kind of control to be able to create different things, different aspects in your in your video, but. Uh, keeping it simple is very important too. The one thing you don't want to do is distract your viewer by having camera movement all over the place or shaky camera or lights that come on and off. You want to focus on what it is you're trying to say with your video, what it is you're trying to, uh, the story that you're trying to get across to the viewer and that's where your talent and the subject matter of your video is, is, is of most importance. Uh, your camera angles, your camera lighting, uh, and, and, and your, your effects, you, you know, your camera effects, they are secondary and should not even be noticeable in, in a good video production.
Now this brings us to the third and final aspect of the video production and that is post-production or your editing stage. And this probably could be the most challenging part of doing a video because once you've got all your shots in the camera and you're ready to sit down, it's this it's time to make decisions on on how it's going to look and how it's going to be put together. Editing videos nowadays has become a very simple matter because computers have helped us to make the the process a lot easier. In the old days it used to require, you know, cutting film or uh, doing a B roll editing on a on a on a, on a multi-million dollar editing system. Nowadays with the handy cams and the camera systems that you can buy uh, in any store and the computer systems that we have available, the software that's available to those computers, uh, you can do a really good professional quality videos just to, you know in your home computer system. The first thing you want to do now in the editing stage of your video is to bring the footage from your camera into your computer so that you can edit it. With most cameras there's some sort of uh, cable system that allows you to plug that into your, your computer and transfer the footage from your, your camera into your computer. In most cases it's just a simple drag and drop. Now what you're going to be using to do a video, you know, to edit your video nowadays, uh, there's a whole range of non-linear editing uh, tools out there, uh, varying from uh, things like uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Final Cut Pro, <clears throat> even iMovie on the on the Mac system, and lots of uh, there's lots of free software that you can you can get online as well that'll do everything from very basic editing to um, professional quality um, multi multi track editing and 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 you know you name it. So you've got your video shots in your computer and you're ready to start editing. I would suggest that the, the first thing you would do would be to lay down a track with your music so that now you have a basis of where, you to, where you're going to start editing. And from there you're going to start cutting your video clips to match that audio track. Uh, in a lot of cases what you want to probably do is start with a what's known as an establishing shot or a it's a, usually what's called a long shot where you let your viewer know where the location is that we're, we're, we're viewing and what's going on in the scene. So all your actors or all your talent will be in that scene and we'll, we'll establish what, what the scenario is. And from there you can cut to your close-ups and your medium shots and as you had planned it in your, in your pre-production stage you can cut that. Uh, you can cut your video basically to, to to the way you want it. What you'll probably find that you'll end up doing is is editing out of sequence. In other words, you'll edit shots that were shot at different times. You might have uh, taken uh, five or six shots uh, from the top of a ladder, say, of your of your scene, and then you took your camera in close and got some shots, close-up shots of your actors. So you might want to intersperse those. You might, have, you might want to use one shot from the long shot and then cut to a close-up. So you're, you're editing out a sequence. But as long as you're continuing to edit to the music and you're making sure that you're synchronizing your music with the, the actors uh, and their, and their lip-sync, uh, then it should all flow together nicely. So it's this, at this point too in your editing stage where you might decide that you want to add some special effects. Um, as we mentioned before, you want to keep uh, everything fairly simple, especially when you're shooting the video, but you might find that down the road while you're editing you might decide that you'll have one shot that might look good with a little bit of soft blur in it or something like that. Or you might, <clears throat> you might want to introduce um, some kind of color shifting or whatnot. There might be a situation where you'd need some graphics, say at the beginning or the end, you might want to introduce the song with the title. Uh, these are the kinds of things that you can add in post-production and they're quite easy to do with the nonlinear edi editing software that we have nowadays. So those kinds of things you'd, you would do as you, as you edit. And again, that, that helps with your creative process that as you're editing you might you might come up with an idea that, oh, this would look good if I did, you know, uh, did something here. And with the 
the ability of the editing software to, to create uh, these effects for you, um, it's, it enables you to, to be a little bit more creative in that, re in that regard. So now you have your video edited, you've got all your shots in place, you have all your special effects, you've got your graphics and your titlings and all that. What do you do now? You've got to decide next what it is that you're going to do with your video once it's produced. Now, you might be uploading it to YouTube, you might be presenting it uh, locally in your, in, your, uh, in your local church, or you might be sending it uh, to a client on a DVD or a Blu-ray. So, depending on what it is that you plan to do with your video once it's produced, uh, will determine what format you master it on. Once you've finished editing everything together, the video then has to be output on a master. And depending, as they say, on what it is that you're going to be doing, you would determine what type of uh, uh, format you would use. And there are some software uh, applications out there that allow you to uh, create uh, MP4 videos or H.264 videos or YouTube videos, uh, depending on what, uh, what you're looking at. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to shoot a video. And I hope that we've shed some light on some of the aspects uh, of shooting video that uh, you know enables you to have a better understanding of what you need to do. Again, there's uh, a multitude of, of resources on YouTube, online, that uh, will go in depth in the, any of the topics that we've covered in this. So, you know, don't hesitate to look at those if you need more information on a specific item. So, thanks for watching. Bye for now.